Lubitsch was known for Lubitsch's touch, and his fingers known yeah. for that touch. My touch was that every story was different, I guess. With films as diverse as 1932's Little Caesar to 1962's Gypsy... This time I'm gonna make you a star, baby. ...director Mervyn Leroy proved that the kind of film he did best was any kind of film. Born in 1900 in San Francisco, Mervyn Leroy knew struggle from an early age. In 1906, he and his father escaped the great San Francisco earthquake with their lives and little else. The sights and sounds of this tragedy would never leave Leroy. Always the dedicated craftsman, he later used these images in his 1951 epic, Quo Vadis, for the burning of Rome scenes, creating Oscar-winning special effects. But that was well into the future. Young Leroy's start in showbiz came on the vaudeville circuit, traveling the country as a singer in the act Leroy and Cooper, Two Kids and a Piano. After a moderate amount of success, the act broke up, leaving Leroy looking for a follow-up act. Wanting to break into moving pictures, Leroy called on Jesse Lasky in New York, a cousin who also started in vaudeville, but who was now, in 1922, one of the pioneers of American film, whose partners just happened to be Adolf Zucker, Samuel Goldwyn, and Cecil B. DeMille. With a wink and a nod, Leroy went west to Hollywood. Not to glamour jobs, but in wardrobe, the lab, as a camera assistant, then graduating to gag writer in silent films, a skill he would utilize throughout his career. In the halcyon days of Hollywood, it was a short step from gag man to director, which happened for Leroy in 1928. Sadly, many of his early films have been lost, but the director was an innovator from the beginning, with one important rule for his films. Good stories make good movies. Like the groundbreaking gangster film that helped mold a genre, Little Caesar. You hire these mugs, they miss, now you're through. If you ain't out of town by tomorrow morning, you won't never leave it except in a pine box. Exposing corrupt prison conditions in I Am a Fugitive from a Chain Gang. Come on, get up, quit your stalling. I was just wiping the sweat off my face. Have you got it knocked off? The effects of prejudice in They Won't Forget. The issue involved here is whether or not I am guilty of the murder of Mary Clay. Not whether the North hates the South or the South hates the North. Thank you. Poor fool. He just dug his own grave. Or unfair adoption practices in Blossoms in the Dust. Every human being born into this world deserves the right to make its own good name without bigotry and prejudice. Technically, Leroy took advantage of his experience in the lab and with the camera by constantly searching for innovative ways to film a scene, advancing his art. Yeah, we dropped some more when we took the clearinghouse reports off the front page. Mr. Randall is not in, Miss Borey. Oh, operator, we were cut off. And making brilliant use of I staging. Great boss. Yeah, but it feels terrible. Oh, you're getting up in the world, Rico. All right, boys, now, Miss Davies, when you come through there, stay right there at the desk and then right through to that door, you understand? Leroy's mastery of his craft and the fact that none of his films lost money earned him the respect of the industry. When tapped by Louis B. Mayer to succeed Irving Thalberg in 1938 as head of production at MGM, he was more than up to the task. In fact, Leroy was able to convince Mayer to take a chance by purchasing the rights to a story that would become that studio's most expensive film to date. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. <laughs> the Wizard of Oz would become one of the most successful movies of all time. I'm very surprised by it. I'm very happy about it. We never believed it was going to be as big as it is. And I think it'll go on for many, many years, long after I'm gone. Yet after the mammoth achievement of The Wizard of Oz and just one year in the executive chair, Mervyn Leroy found himself looking longingly at the director's chair once again. Ironically, Leroy's first film as a director after The Wizard of Oz, which lost the Best Picture Oscar to Gone with the Wind, was Waterloo Bridge, starring the much sought after Vivian Lee, fresh from her Oscar win for the acclaimed Civil War drama. Welcome home. Thanks, Ducky. Another skill in Leroy's vast repertoire was his ability to spot new talent. His discoveries read like a Hollywood who's who list. Clark Gable giving him his first screen test, Gretchen Young changing her name to Loretta, and casting Robert Mitchum in what would be a pivotal role for the struggling actor. Honest man. 
Dealer takes two. But by far, the director's most stunning discovery was 15-year-old Judy Turner, who he transformed into Lana in They Won't Forget. Still mad? You know I can't stay mad at anybody very long. The Sweater Girl was born, and one of the most glamorous ladies of the screen was created. Oh, my child. Mervyn Leroy always developed good relationships with his actors, trusting their instincts. One of the director's favorite actresses, Greer Garson, remembers him giving just this small amount of direction. Now, let's have a nice scene with a lot of feeling. Oh, believe me, gentlemen. There are no illegitimate babies. There are only illegitimate parents. And feeling is what he got. Mervyn Leroy's films won many Oscars over the years, both acting and technical awards. Yet, oddly enough, this director, whose career spanned over 40 years, never won the coveted prize for one of his features. He did, however, receive recognition when, in 1945, he won the Oscar for Best Short Film for The House I Live In, a project brought to him by a youthful Frank Sinatra. Somebody in for licking? You bet! Look at that smear! Yeah, but ten against one. It's not very fair. But awards seem of little consequence when one considers a career as diverse as Mervyn Leroy's. This director's ultimate award is the countless number of people who continue to be moved and charmed by his impressive body of work. I've never made a picture the same. Never made a picture ever. It was the same type of picture. Quite a tall order, but one that was filled with style and skill by one of Hollywood's most talented and creative directors, Mervyn Leroy. A celebration of director Mervyn Leroy all this week at 8 p.m. Eastern here on Turner Classic Movies. This is your ticket to Turner Classic Movies. Now playing, man, what a guy. 24 hours a day, more than 350 movies per month. Now playing. The official viewer's guide to Turner Classic Movies with easy-to-read movie schedules along with highlights of TCM's monthly star and director tributes, film festivals, and weekly showcases. Plus behind-the-scenes cover stories by our own Robert Osborne. Just call 1-800-TCM-1002 and for only $9.97 per year, you'll be able to look up when your favorite movies will be on Turner Classic Movies. It's now playing. So call 1-800-TCM-1002 or send check or money order to Now Playing, P.O. Box 420934, Palm Coast, Florida, 32142-0934. And for only $9.97 per year, get your ticket to Movie Heaven from Turner Classic Movies. Allow 6 to 12 weeks for delivery. Hi there, I'm Robert Osborne. Tonight on Turner Classic Movies, our Director of the Month, Mervyn Leroy, displays his talents for directing musicals. First at 8 p.m. Eastern, Anne Blythe plays a French-Canadian backwoods girl who tries to prevent a Mountie, Howard Keel, from capturing an outlaw that she loves, played by Fernando Lamas. It's the 1954 version of the famous musical, Rosemary. Then at 10 o'clock, Esther Williams portrays real-life swimming star Annette Kellerman in a lavish Technicolor musical that traces Kellerman's career from Carnival to Broadway. Walter Pidgeon and Victor Mature co-star in Million Dollar Mermaid. Then at 12 midnight, Howard Keel stars as a Broadway promoter who journeys to Paris to capitalize on his friend's inheritance of an exclusive fashion boutique. It's a musical co-starring Catherine Grayson, Red Skelton, and Ann Miller, and it's called Lovely to Look At. So join us for a tune-filled evening with director Mervyn Leroy. It all starts tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on Turner Classic Movies.